This is Covington, Louisiana, and the first people to walk these grounds were natives of the Marksville and Trafuncta cultures. Behind me is the Bogafalaya River, and they would use pirogs and canoes to traverse the marshes and the bayous here and just fish near the lake and hunt animals in the interior woods. By the time of European arrival, the Pisa natives had built seven villages on the North Shore. After the American Revolution, Spain obtained the North Shore region and made numerous land grants along the Chifuncta and the Bogafalaya rivers. In 1800, a guy named Jacques Drou received a grant of 1,600 arpents on the east bank of the Bogafalaya across from us. He proposed a town named Saint-Jacques and sold four lots there before deciding to sell his holdings to New Orleans merchant John Wharton Collins on March 16, 1813. John Wharton Collins was from Philadelphia and came to New Orleans after his brother William urged him to settle here and establish a mercantile firm on Magazine Street. His business prospered and eventually John moved to the North Shore and proposed a town to be named after his grandfather called Wharton. The downtown area you see today can also be referred to as the division or district of St. John and it was defined by a Frenchman named Joseph Pili or Pila. The plant for St. John featured a number of square blocks, each centered by a plot of 120 by 120 feet that was set aside for public use. Eventually, the interior areas of these square blocks became known as ox lots because farmers who brought produce or products to Covington sheltered their ox teams and wagon carts there. These central spaces were accessed by alleys to adjacent streets. The name of Wharton wouldn't last too long though. In 1816, the state granted a charter to the town and changed the name to honor a general who died in battle during the War of 1812 and his name was General Leonard Covington. One of the early actions of the Newtown government was to establish a labor tax that required all able-bodied males to either work on the town's roads for six days each year or purchase an exemption by paying a fee to the Board of Trustees. Another early rule required property owners to maintain the ditches along their street frontage and to build banquettes or sidewalks so that pedestrians could move out of the way of traffic. Those owning property on street corners were required to build and maintain bridges over the ditches to the streets. Now, eventually John Collins would die of an undisclosed illness, but it was likely due to being exposed to unfavorable conditions during his military service for the Battle of New Orleans in 1815. And he's buried in a lead casket here in Covington. The only surviving original house of worship is Christ Episcopal Church, which was built in 1846 and continues to offer services. The church was built by slaves and had pews with gates, as was common in the Eastern American colonies at the time and a slave loft where the carriage driver sat during services. As the town grew, prosperity followed it until the New Orleans, Jackson and Great Northern Railroad was built between New Orleans and Jackson, Mississippi. It offered low freight rates and eventually the Covington port suffered severe losses. Another industry would have to step up to help bring revenue to the town and that was tourism. The intense New Orleans heat, but mostly yellow fever outbreak, saw tons of people flock to the North Shore to enjoy their summers. Hotels began popping up and soon the town began to prosper again, just in time for the Civil War to break out. January 26, 1861, Louisiana officially joined the Confederate States and by May 1st, 1862, all shipping in Lake Pontchartrain came to a halt as New Orleans fell to the Union and they eventually entered Covington on July 26, 1862. The troops soon withdrew though, marching back to their vessel called the Grey Cloud and returned to New Orleans via the Chifuncta River. Along the way, the Union troops raided the town and took whatever they wanted, along with bands of outlaws and deserters called Jayhawkers who preyed upon the civilian population. It is notable that the St. Tammany Parish delegates voted no to secession at the state legislature's convention in 1860. By the time the Civil War was declared, Eight national flags had been flown over St. Tammany Parish. On May 6, 1888, the East Louisiana Railroad reached Covington, bringing about an economic boom. Columbia Street Landing is considered to be the birthplace of Covington. This active harbor once docked hundreds of boats and brought many early settlers to Covington. Established in the early 1800s, it was a vital link to other river cities transporting cotton, lumber, bricks, whiskey, and mail. Oyster luggers used the port to transport fresh oysters to the community through the 1930s. 
Columbia Street is also where you can attend the annual St. Tammany Parish Fair in October. Now you can also find something very unique in Covington called the Tulane National Primate Research Center, or TNPRC for short. TNPRC is a federally funded biomedical research facility associated with Tulane University in New Orleans and is one of only seven national primate research centers which conduct biomedical research on primates. You can't really tell from the road, but it is massive. It's made up of a 500 acre complex with dozens of buildings that form the main administrative and laboratory complex on the north side of Three Rivers Road. The south side is laid out in a huge grid of cages that house the monkeys. The crazy part is that if these monkeys were human, there's enough of them to make this facility the fourth largest town in St. Tammany Parish by population. A more detailed video, including monkey escapes and disease outbreaks, will be available on our Patreon channel. And we couldn't bring you this information without your support on Patreon. And we'd like to thank all of those who have already contributed and encourage anyone watching this video right now to consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Louisiana Dread. For more Louisiana history, horror, folklore, and culture, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Kyle Crosby, and this is Louisiana Dread Quick History.